Hi, uh, thank you for joining me to talk about COVID-19 and managing your hearing and, and ear problem during the pandemic. Uh, my name is George Juana and I'm the site chair of the ENT department in downtown uh, Mount Sinai, which is New York Pioneer and Mount Sinai Beth Israel. Also, I am the uh, division chief of the otology and neuroautology and hearing and balance of Mount Sinai Health System. It is very important to notice that uh, unfortunately during uh, this uh, pandemic, uh, our patients with hard of hearing are have a hard time to communicate and connect uh, physically with us. So uh, one of the things that we recommend uh, our patients to do is either use a typing when they're gonna try to communicate or keeping if they're using a face shield with a face mask to keep a clear uh, vision uh, of the lip so they can do some uh, lip reading. What we're trying to do at Mount Sinai is try to connect with all our patients uh, via telemedicine. And in order to do that, we will connect them through emails as well as well phone calls and try to leave a message uh, that they can, uh, uh, they can listen to it uh, uh, or read it uh, with their ca caption so they can reach out to us. And hopefully it was face-to-face uh, -face and using our uh, um, uh, lip reading, or if they need to type, we can connect with them. It's very hard to see them now in the office, but if we need to do so, we try to bring them in in a safe environment. It is extremely important to be able to uh, reach out and connect with the patients with a new hearing loss or sudden hearing loss. And we really can connect with them uh, via telehealth and telemedicine. That will allow us at least to talk to the patients if they're not completely deaf on, on both sides or it's a hearing loss on one side to know if this is sudden or this is progressive or if this is associated with other symptoms. Patients who with ears have a sudden hearing loss that is acute, we are bringing them to see them in our office and try to offer them some treatment. So the early with treatment such was injection of steroids in the, uh, through their eardrum the higher chances that they can recover uh, their hearing. Um, we created a safe environment in, 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 at New York Eye and Ear and in our offices, which is non-COVID, so patients can come safely if they need to, and we can take care of their hearing loss. So uh, once we establish connection with them through telemedicine and we uh, talk to them via telemedicine, we can know if the hearing is uh, kind of sudden, Usually sudden hearing loss appears in people who have no previous issues with their hearing and they, patients will complain about the ringing in their ears and sometimes vertigo. Uh, and that's usually, even if we don't see the ear, if this is the presentation, we ask the patients to come and see us in the office and we try to make it easy for them and minim minimize the exposure. If the, there is a hearing loss that is muffled or there is drainage in the ear or there is a blockage and they used to have certain this type of hearing loss which could be like impacted cerumen or they get some ear infection and some drainage typically we don't bring those patients in and um, for uh, cerumen we will tell them that's just wait and they can put some drops in it and if for an ear infection if it's draining and pain we put them on drops and we'll visit them again in a week via telemedicine to make sure they did get better. I've seen a couple of patients like that and uh, I, I, I talked to them a week after and they were doing fine and they didn't want to go to come at all to see us. So we can separate both patients. Now there is some technology that they can use. You can buy from Amazon the small earpiece and you can put it in your ear and then can, it can project a picture uh, for us if we need to use that. However, honestly, most of the history and knowing those patients will allow us to uh, discern between if they need to come to be examined and treated here or they can do the first round of treatment via telehealth and follow up via telehealth. They are. Since sudden hearing loss is a, a, an emergency, uh, if we have a patient that uh, we know that has sudden hearing loss, we will arrange an audiology visit uh, same time when they see us uh, in, a, in a safe environment, which is in that uh, Time or in this time is a COVID negative area. So they get tested uh, and they get that hearing test and they will see me. So hearing infection usually, uh, it's either there is a history of that. So this is a patient that we know about that and that's a patient who has that before. 
or usually it's associated with pain and drainage. Sudden hearing loss usually is non-painful and there is no drainage, it's just you drop your hearing and sometimes it's associated with ringing and vertigo and sometimes it's not. Anything that is infection in the ear usually is associated with ear pain and a drainage and sometimes fever depending if this is something related to other part of the ear, nose and throat that is being infected. We can address all the cases uh, via telehealth and we can sort out the patients that they need to be seen. For the cases that they need surgery, they, they can uh, need to get a hearing test. So technically those patients, their surgery, most of them is not an emergent or urgent surgery. And in this situation, we can schedule them to come and get a hearing test and when things would open up and we are allowed to perform elective surgery, they would be on the schedule. For the urgent one, it's a different story, and, and there is a few uh, patients that will need to be uh, referred for ur urgent patients. We have a, a track and process for those patients to get them through the process and make sure they're not going to be exposed. So these patients usually will go under uh, to a pre-op workup where they can get COVID testing uh, within 48 hours of their surgery or less if needed, and they will get some. Uh, testing of their uh, temperature and uh, oxygen level uh, via a pulse ox on their fingers they put. And if they all are decreased, then that COVID negative will proceed with surgery for them. So there is a process for the critical or urgent cases for the ear, and they can follow through that process and we can operate it on them. However, again, the elective one, they don't need to be seen immediately, but then we can schedule at least an appointment for them. And once we open up, for elective surgery, they will be ready to go. So we look at all those cases uh, when we, uh, when the state asked us to sort it out, and we were ahead of uh, the game in that because we were able to look at what needed to be done and what can we await. And cholesteatoma is one of them. Usually, cholesteatoma it's a chronic progressive uh, pathology unless it is associated with complication. And when I say complications, mean like facial nerve weakness or like a complete uh, uh, infection in the neck or in the brain, cause brain abscess or, or abscess or infection behind the ear that is uh, with purulence and fever, they can wait. Because it's a long process to develop in the cholesteatoma and in four to six weeks uh, or eight weeks, it can wait to, to be operated on. So complicated cholesteatoma, it's an urgent and critical and will get them in. And usually these are complicated by a brain infection or an abscess in the neck or behind the ear or a facial nerve, uh, the paralysis. And non-complicated cholesteatoma can wait. As far as acoustic neuroma, and I've seen a few of them uh, via telehealth, uh, it's like any brain tumor. If the tumor is small, it can be watched and we can see them in a few months. If it is a large tumor and it's pressing on the brain stem, then that becomes an emergency and then usually we'll ask those patients to come and we'll operate it on. Yeah, so the problem with hearing aid depends what they have. Unfortunately, the hearing aid, the dispensary is closed now, uh, but if somebody is having hearing aid, it's very important to keep it clean. They can use an alcohol swab and make sure that uh, they take care of that. Uh, again, I keep telling my patients, once you take out the hearing aid, Please avoid the Q-tips because that's going to push uh, the wax or the serum in deeper and make your hearing gate clogged and your ear feel clogged. As far as battery, it depends what they have. Some are chargeable and they need to keep it on charge and some are, have a lot of batteries and uh, they, they just can change them or order them on, on, on back on Amazon or anywhere they can get it from online. So we are very vigilant and very, very careful about everything we're gonna need to do after uh, the COVID area. So everything is gonna be cleaned and prepared and, 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 and terminal clean if, if needed to between patients. Each patient will be treated separately in, in a room by themselves. And, and then we can uh, uh, assess the patients before they get to the office. If they have any symptoms, being exposed uh, to COVID, uh, if they check their temperature or we can check their temperature, and there might be a, a time that we might be able also to test the patients quickly and rapidly in our offices, or if they get tested like on, on the way, getting into the offices uh, for COVID. 
uh, we want to reassure our patients that we're taking it very seriously and our patients are like our families and we will do exactly what we do for our family to keep everybody safe. And when I mean everybody, it's not only the patients, also it's our staff, it's our front desk, our security, our nurses, and everybody. This is something very serious and we take it very seriously. So we're not going to bring any patient. If there is one doubt in our mind, they're going to be exposed. Everything will be meticulously cleaned and the work in collaboration with our infectious disease prevention and our staff and practice manager in our offices. Um, I think uh, everybody's happy with telemedicine because we can connect with our patients. Uh, and uh, the new patients are happy that they have somebody to listen to their new problem and uh, tell them that this is serious, that they need to come or it's not, and take care of it. Uh, and that's very important to keep uh, this relationship. Uh, and uh, the follow-up patients or the patients that we are, our patients, are extremely happy that we connect it back to them, make sure that they are doing okay, and, and reassure them that, uh, that we, we're going to uh, see them. If there is a problem, we can handle it on telemedicine. If not, we will always bring them here. So it's been a, a very positive experience for the patients. Uh, they do like it, uh, and uh, they understand the, the risk, and they're happy that we're making everything possible to avoid any exposure or risk on, our, on the patients. How they reach us, they can call at 212-979-4200 and they can schedule an appointment and there is a staff that will work, will help them and will work with them to get either the app or to get um, on their phone or on the laptop, on desktop, wherever they need to be able to connect uh, with us. It's very important for us to keep in touch with our patients and with our new patients and let them know that we are here for them. And uh, there's a lot of things we can solve on telemedicine. And if not, there's also a lot of way to see them and, uh, and limit the exposure and, and bring them to a, a non-COVID area where they don't have to worry about.